be the better of the rain. On the guides here, up here in the commentary box, they're racing Stormy Ruler, missed the start two or three, and Vintage Stock will go straight back with it. That's funny, as is the first of them to jump away. Comfort Me pushing up on the inside, though, trying to hold it out, so they're going pretty quickly in the early stages. Rushing forward, Bruce Almighty with Interstate between horses. Brutus Maximus will tuck just in behind them. They're followed by Heels of Plenty at the 950. Rumraker had settled back over on the inside from Beat the Bro after a length to combat ready. Giant leap back there in the field. Ahead of Majestic Man, further back is Beret. And then second last is Vintage Stock, the tail end of Stormy Ruler. They work out towards the side. The field strings out to the pace had been hot. That's funny as won the battle for the lead. Took them to the 600. That's funny as by a length over Bruce Almighty who came off the steel before the corner. Over on the inside, Comfort Me being urged along. Running fourth interstate. Two lengths, Brutus Maximus at the top of the straight. Followed back on the rails by Rumraker and beat the bro headed the remainder now where's Giant Leap back there in the field straightened up running about 8th or ninth as that funny as kicks 250 left to go that's funny as it shot away by 3 to Rumraker Comfort Me sticks on beat the bro is starting to put in strongly but that's funny as inside the last 100 is clear and it'll be that's funny as all the way that's funny as by 2 at the finish over beat the bro a half head away Rumraker third down the outside came running on wider out is Beret and they were followed behind them by uh, Brutus Maximus and Vintage Stock Giant Leap never got warm Interstate back with Bruce Almighty Comfort Me didn't fire then Combat Ready Majestic Man back there in the field heels are plenty and last home in actual fact Stormy Ruler number seven does it all of the way that's funny as number seven that's funny as Carlene Heffel for the Luciani stable, Dion Luciani. Second up, sprung the gates, work for the lead. No gimme to get to the front, that's for sure. But kicked off the bin, put a margin on them, and has won comfortably from four beat the bro, Paul Harvey, five rum raker, Troy Turner, and six beret, Mitchell Pateman in front of Comfort Me. Seven, four, five, and six, the placings after the running of the fourth. In 123.05, two and a quarter and ahead of the margins. The winner of Snippet Sun Gilding from Scenic Fair for Kelly Everett's La Loma Farms, Paul Blinko, uh, Billy Wilcock and DJ Blakeney. Uh, good on the owners too. Good bunch of people involved there with That's Funny As. Trained by Dion Luciani and handled perfectly in front by Carlene Heffel. She didn't give them much wriggle room after booting away at the top of the home straight and it was going to be all interest in the miners only from about the 200 metre mark. 34.86 is the closing sectional. Giant Leap got right back in the field and uh, it really never got warm at any point in the race. Comfort Me sat prominent and dropped right out in the home straight. As we move to race five, the West Speed Platinum Handicap over the 1300 at 222. 12 Domineer, 17 Petite La Femme are the scratching. Sean O'Donnell goes on to 18 in trade prize in the fifth for the day. down here in the yard and Ian it's been a big big week for you but let's talk about that's funny as here 34 days ago we saw him at first up what were your expectations coming into that today today uh, the plan was to go to the front try and have a little bit of an easy time in the middle of the race that bit didn't really eventuate it of course had to do a, a lot of work uh, through the race but we always plan to get going well before the turn and make them uh, chase the horse down uh, so and it worked perfectly yeah you saw him up to 2,000 meters of an aquanita last preparation up to 1400 meters did that always look like it was going to be more suitable today yeah yeah up, up in distance it'll it'll probably keep stepping up in distance now but the time it got up to the 2000 last time was probably at the end of its prep and probably wasn't at its best so uh, you'll see the horse go the same way this time in yeah as far as 2000 again this time I think so yes yep yep yeah. Yeah been a big week for you as we mentioned with the fires you've been very busy evacuating horses all throughout the night what, what does Ascot look like at the moment is there still a few evacuees around a lot of horses in Ascot I've ha I had uh, one point I had 17 horses in my backyard I had everything from Clydesdales to little ponies and hacks and everything um, they just had to get the horses out in a, in a, in a big truck in a big hurry obviously uh, one of the issues after that was finding out whose horses they were there were a lot of cases where people were just grabbing horses out of paddocks because the paddocks were on fire. So first priority was to get them out and, and get them down. 
so many people have, have put so much work into it. Uh, the feed companies, Pet Stock, uh, Mandurah Stock Feeds, Grantham's Horse Transport, Ramsey's, that, they've just been going non-stop all night. And uh, the racing trainers and Ascot have uh, been wonderful. They've just been shoving horses in any, anywhere they've got a gap. Um, didn't have to be asked twice. Um, and the, all the stable staff and Ascot have been working all day doing their jobs and then caring for these horses after. So it's just quite astonishing how the community came together, whether it be to make a financial donation, buy some feed or, or give up their time as well. You must be amazed by what you've seen. Oh, the financial do donations have been huge. Um, they've, they've gone into the various stock feeders and they've been great. They, they use my point, my place as a, as a uh, point to get the feed out. So we've had people coming and get it from there. Um, we've had people volunteering the use of their trucks to get the feed to where the horses are. Places like Orange Grove, we've got 40, 50 horses out there. Claremont, there's about 40, 50 out there. There's, there's 50 odd in Ascot. They're, they're all over the place. Um, I just keep finding them. So the donations of feed and we've said all sorts of stories. We had a lady rang us this morning whose entire property was wiped out. Um, she lost her house, her paddock, everything. And she had four horses that had to be cared for, of course. Um, so, you know, the financial problems that go with all of that, plus they've got to find somewhere to live and everything. So the fact that their horses are uh, it's one less thing they have to worry about uh, is a big weight off their mind. And they've still, st still got a heap of issues, of course, but at least they don't have to worry about their horses. So. Also, the vets have been volunteering their time. It, just a, an endless list of people that have just come forward and, and worked tire, tirelessly to look after these animals. And there's goats and alpacas and camels and oh, you name it, I've seen it all. Oh, there is everything, but it does. That story right there puts it all into perspective. A win like this is nice on Magic Millions Day, but really nothing compared to what's been happening during the week. But some good karma coming your way, uh, given the hard work that you guys have had to put in this week. So well yeah. done. OK, thank you. Ian Gladding there after the victory of That's Funny As, but giving us a wonderful insight into what has been going on behind the scenes with the fire during the week. And the equine community, everybody who has been involved, you have to just tip your hat off to them because they've done such a wonderful, wonderful job.